Um, can I get your full name? Dan Walker. And what is your title and who do you work for? I'm the executive director of the New Orleans Healing Center. And what, what do you do here at the Healing Center and what's the Healing Center's mission? Can you walk me through that? Sure. Um, probably to start off with, our mission is to uh, bring healing at an individual and community level um, to the surrounding neighborhoods. It was established not too long after Katrina and I think more than anything they the people who were very hands-on in, in, um, in getting this place started knew that the um, the individual well-being of the people that lived around here had to be tied in with the community redevelopment that was going to happen um, and that people had been damaged emotionally and psychologically physically uh, and spiritually and they were very very let down and very very damaged after that time so it was really an attempt to try to address a lot of those concerns. Uh, since then, the community has changed quite a lot. Um, it's a very different place now from what it was just a few years ago. Uh, and our place in that is, is constantly changing as well. But our mission is ultimately to be a place where people can come to address the healing that they need on a physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, um, very sustainable levels, and, uh, and use that in their everyday life to not only take care of themselves but empower themselves to be active community members and work in the community as well. How, how do you guys help facilitate that uh, specifically? We, um, in providing this giant space, we have a 55,000 square foot building uh, which used to be Universal Furniture Warehouse. Uh, so in having this big space which not only has a number of different sized uh, offices and suites and, uh, and spaces for, for tenants to have businesses and their own organizations. Uh, we very carefully select who comes into the building and who has a place here. Um, and in setting it up, uh, a lot of people were hand chosen and very uh, addressed. You know, or um, The people setting it up went and carefully sourced some people because we knew that we wanted to have services in here. So uh, you literally invited certain people? Yeah. Um, to be a founding member of the Healing Center. And we knew that each business coming in would need to not only um, be in line with our overall mission, but actively contribute to that in some way. So the, the main, um, I guess, qualifications for, for being an organization here in the Healing Center are that you will contribute to healing and individual empowerment in the community on some level. We're really fairly open to what direction they take in doing that, which is why we have such a variety of businesses in here. Uh, but also what we're doing is creating a space of, of like-minded people. Um, so it's not like we have, you know, a big corporate branch over here and, you know, corner stores down here. We have a whole different range of services and they're all working towards the same kind of common goal. And w is there a criteria that you guys look at when somebody is wanting to come into this building? We really like to see what their um, social mission is. Um, we certainly wouldn't, for instance, accept um, you know, corporate lawyers that only work on business contracts or things like that. Um, obviously, there's a, a place for that, but it's not here in this center. Um, if, however, a lawyer was coming in, they did a lot of pro bono work and they worked with community groups um, or individuals who are having trouble getting back on track after Katrina, especially, uh, then you know that would be the type of business that would be welcomed here. And who, who vets those applications? I do initially, um, and then it goes up to our board. So. We are um, overseen by a board uh, of currently seven people. Uh, they're all from New Orleans. They are all uh, involved in local businesses. Um, some of them are tenants in the building. Two of them are tenants in the building. Um, and uh, they're all um, uh, contributing different kind of qualities and elements from, from different areas of the city as well. And how did you become a part of this? Initially, I was involved way before the building opened. Uh, I was here in New Orleans, um, I'm Australian, I'm, I'm not from here. Um, <laughs> I was in New Orleans in 2007. I was doing field work for my PhD. Which is? Uh, it's in religious anthropology, comparative religions. And I was talking to people and learned about this Sunday salon group um, that Sally Ann Glassman was leading um, and she'd been one of the people that I interviewed for my field work as well. Um, and she said, I'll oh, come along to this because we've been talking. She learned that I had a background in community organizations and community outreach and engagement. Um, and she was very interested in the work I was doing with different religious groups because the people involved at that time were very keen that this would be um, 
a very spiritually aware place as well, um, and it would have a strong spiritual foundation, and that people here would have their spiritual needs met along with their physical and emotional needs. So she was very keen to have different faith groups involved and wondered, you know, what's the best way to bring those people together without the differences being the main thing and instead finding out commonalities. Uh, so I was invited to a few salon meetings from that group. We spoke about different ways that they could get different groups involved. Um, I shared kind of what failings I'd had and what successes I've had in different community organizations. Uh, and because the people that were around the table talking were local business owners, local artists, just residents that wanted to make a difference. They weren't necessarily at that stage bringing their expertise to the table. They just wanted to do something. Um, so we spoke about that. So in, in that way I was here at a very early stage and then I went back to Australia. I stayed in touch. I was very keen to see how the project was going. Um, we stayed in touch for all these years. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, uh, they, the organization was without an executive director. And I happened to be asking how things were going and uh, Sally said, well actually we are uh, opening you know, for the position. Do you want to throw your hat in the ring? And I thought about it and went, eh, yeah, actually it would be nice to have a more hands-on role in this place that I've watched develop from afar for all this time. Um, and I think with the unique combination of, of background and experience and study that I had, um, it kind of, I was filling a, a, a niche here that, because it's a, it's a unique place here where a physical space that needs management and direction, we are um, a community center that needs partners and, and promotion, uh, and we're also a, a commercial um, retail and tenant space, so I'm working with all the business leases from everyone that works here, so it's a, you know, it's a very complex and, and unique kind of place and it needs someone that has a variety of different backgrounds, I think, to fill this, this position. Have you changed having worked here? Have I changed personally? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, this was, um, I think in some ways, the learning curve for me was very steep. Um, I've, my most recent uh, kind of roles and, and positions that I've taken have been um, looking at community development instead from a very policy driven and strategic place. Um, so to come back here and be very hands on again was, it was refreshing and challenging, I've forgotten a lot. And this community is different from anywhere else in the world that I've lived, like there's nowhere like New Orleans. And I mean that in a very good way and, and at times it was a very bad way. We are a very interesting city and, and while I consider myself coming to be a part of it now after a year and a half, um, it's, it's its own unique little, uh, little place and I love it for all of that. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it certainly changed me and I think the place has changed a little since I've been here as well, so we, it's a very organic kind of place. What do you think makes this area, this neighborhood in New Orleans, um, unique and challenging, both? That's an interesting question. I think um, I would have to look back a long way. I mean, the, the age of this city and the, the different peoples that contributed to its very early development um, had a lot to do with it. I mean, people still consider themselves very French here, even though, you know, trying to find a word of actual spoken French is tricky. Um, but it shows in the, the architecture and the food and the, most importantly, I think, in the, the ethos and the way that people live their lives. Uh, you can still see a very strong connection to that Western European kind of ideal, which was very different to, I guess, the British and the Dutch settlements that were in other parts of the country. Um, but also since then, uh, you know, it's experienced things like Katrina, half the population of the city left, more um, after that. People were very damaged, um, and a whole bunch of different people have come here since then. I, I found that when I was doing my research here and I was talking to people, um, one thing I asked them was, are you from here, and if not, where are you from, and why are you here? I found a lot of people um, had said, no, I'm not from here, I'm from California or somewhere else. We visited a couple of years ago and then we moved six months later. There's just something about the city that, that brings people here. And I think that is almost um, an ineffable quality that it's so hard to pin down. If I could answer it, I'd, I'd probably be rich. But it's, um, it's, it's certainly something, just some kind of strange cultural atmospheric thing that you don't really find in one place. I think you find elements of it all over the place, but it seems to have all gathered here. I don't know, I don't know why, but I love it. You, you did not mention um, the slave population that made up like the real foundation of New Orleans, yeah. I would say. 
Um, do you see that in the history? Do you, how do you see that affecting the communities and the disenfranchised mm -hmm. part of this community in, in itself? I think that element certainly has a very strong uh, role in the way people in New Orleans and in the South and in America think about themselves. I find it very interesting. We in Australia certainly have our own issues with our own Aboriginal peoples, um, but we never had a slavery type movement. Um, so to see a whole nation built on the backs of slavery um, is really, and then the way the nation has subsequently dealt with it is or a fascinating not dealt with topic. It. Not dealt with it, avoided it, um, tried not to talk about it. Uh, I think in New Orleans, people are very aware of it at all times, and yet um, in different ways. I don't think it's as uh, as open for discussion as probably it should be, but at the same time it affects what everybody does and the way they think about things. Um, I certainly think that for African American populations it must be at the forethought of every action and decision and, and movement that they make, not just here but in the country. Um, and not just politically, but socially and culturally. Uh, I think New Orleans, perhaps more than other places, has a different uh, scope on a lot of it because not only was the city, like all other places, built um, by slaves and on the, the money that people made from slaves, but also they had a very unique mixed race population here long before any other part of the country. Um, and not only was it a, a new culture that was emerging, but it held a very unique place in society. Um, those who weren't enslaved but were free obviously weren't white folks and didn't hold that social power. And yet at the same time, many people had quite a bit of social authority. So figures like Marie Laveau and other leading women of color at the time held a place here in New Orleans that they couldn't have had any other place in the country or the world. Um, and I think that has contributed to an ongoing sense of, of um, uh, I guess, authority and power in some way in people here, and at the same time being aware that they may not get away with some of that anywhere else in the country, and the behaviors we have in New Orleans may not be accepted anywhere else. And I think that continues to draw artists and people who perhaps feel like they're on the fringe of other places find a home here because I think this was you know, from the days of the French sending their prostitutes and criminals and, and kind of the rejects of their society here. I think people here took that and, and it empowered that idea and they, they owned it. Uh, and I think that continues to this day. And so I think people, uh, when they do move here or when they grew up here, they, they recognize that, it resonates with them. Um, and of course, the slavery uh, concerns that are still going on, the, the racial, uh, engagements, but also, I guess, conflicts, uh, still affected every day. It's a, it's an interesting kind of melting pot. And this neighborhood has a large portion of that disenfranchised population. Um, has the center thought about doing anything in terms of um, ancestral healing or cultural healing in that regard? It's something that we've wanted to do a lot, um, and I think that manifests most in the spiritual work that we do. Uh, so we have actually coming up next month, Sacred Music Festival, uh, which brings together um, performers from a number of different faith-based and spiritual-based backgrounds. We have Buddhist monks, we have um, gospel singers, we have um, a band that is, bases all this music on um, kirtan and the yoga tradition. Just all sorts going on all day, as well as local um, artists and uh, representatives kind of coming together with tables and booths, making altars, sharing story time circles, um, sharing food, um, handmade crafts. And at the core of that is our hope that when people come together, uh, particularly through music and art, they share their um, similarities and, and their hopes for the community. Um, and a lot of that reflects our, our uh, I think, ancestral place and our, our spiritual belonging here. And it helps to bring that to the fore in a way that New Orleans does best with music and, and celebration.